Hey guys, okay, I was making a post about this and I'm telling you, I just could not, <laughs> I, I couldn't do it in a post. It was just too much to put in a post. And um, I don't know, I was really hyped. And so I was like, let me hop on here and share this with you guys because. Once you all really grasp this and understand how this works, it's going to look like it's magic. This is not magic. This is real life. And once I break it down to you, you are going to understand. But this is so useful. So it's going to change your life. And so I have to really share this with you guys. So let's talk about bending reality or bending time. Okay, let's just start with understanding that time you've heard in ancient spirituality and basically all the systems, they all tell you that time is an illusion. But I want you to really ground into that before I start explaining how this works. Okay, first, recognize that in your life, you have experienced time very differently. When you are a kid, time, a day, how long is a day when you're a kid, right? How long is a day when you're a kid versus how long is a day when you're 30? And I'm not 60, but <laughs> I can just venture to guess that 60 probably feels really long or a day feels really short when you're 60. If you've ever had an experience that was traumatic, you will probably notice like I've, I've heard of people say, you know, they had a car accident and it's like time stopped during that moment. It was maybe five seconds, but it felt like hours, right? Or maybe you've even had an experience. This is like an everyday experience. Like I was in there cleaning the bathroom this morning and it felt like, like it takes me forever to do that. <laughs> but then I can spend the same amount of time doing something else and it's something I love and time goes faster. So. Let's talk about bending reality, um, instant manifestation, quantum leaps, how and why that happens. And this is something that like, it looks magical. It's really not. I do this with my clients all, of, all the time. The problem is, is that for most people, if you're watching this, you're probably a high achiever of some sort. You probably have been challenged with hustling, overthinking, um, pushing, trying to force things, planning all the time, et cetera, et cetera because we think that time is linear. Time is not linear, but what is really holding most people back is in your life, you likely are trying to fit into the world around you, the collective, and there's fear around being different. It's this fear that keeps you stuck. It's this fear that prevents you from experiencing quantum leaps or bending reality. But what happens is when you decide to take the risk and lean into what lights you up, what you're enthusiastic about, that thing that only you have that certain combination of magic that is excellence. It is your excellence. It's what you are excellent in. And it's so, it's hard, you might not even see it because it's so natural to you. Is this resonating? Are you all, are you feeling where I'm coming from? It's so natural to you that you probably miss it. But what happens is in our lives, we get so caught up in trying to be what others expect, in trying to plan, in overthinking, in, in trying to figure out how we're going to get where we want to get. Instead of, in the moment, living our enthusiasm, living our passion now. That's why I'm on a mission to redefine purpose. Because purpose is in the moment. It is this unique, this unique um, order of expression that you came to be, that only you can, that only you came to be, okay? When you do this, what happens is time bends to your will. When you are in your genius zone, I'm sure that you've seen time just fly by. 
What happens is when you are in your genius, you don't have to work to become an expert in something because time is bending to your will. This is something that you are already born with an innate talent and gift for. So what happens is, is you are able to accelerate your learning. You are able to master that area very quickly. And guess what happens when you do that? The world notices it. When I, I see it all the time. When people operate in what is not their excellence, they have to work hard to get noticed for it. They, ha they have to work hard to, um, to be recognized for it. And what happens is when you actually choose to step into what is your enthusiasm, what is your passion, what is your purpose now, it become, it's an alignment with who you are, who literally who you are. Most people, there's, we can feel there's something off with them. It's almost like they're lying, even though they're not actually saying anything that's a lie, but it's like their existence is a lie. And so we have to, it's, a, it's hard for us to trust them. And it's hard for people to trust you when you aren't operating in your genius zone. So let me give you some real life examples of how I've done this multiple times, how I've helped other people go through this. So I want you guys to know that this is possible. And when you do it, you better tag me when this happens. Let me give you the example of, um, of this move. So Whenever my husband and I sat down New Year's Eve, by the way, this happened in less than 90 days from the time that we sat with this. We sat down and we had a piece of paper and what we did was described the lifestyle that was gonna light us up. And we started to live that. We had no plan for how it was gonna happen. Once we were like looking on paper, we were like, okay, yeah, we could probably make this happen in like two years. What happened was once we adjusted to what would feel good and started living like that, boom, opportunity came in and we were moved within 90 days, literally. Another way I've seen this happen, um, my husband, he had a whole business plan, five years long business plan. And literally, I call it skipping to the front of the line. Some things happen that you couldn't even fathom, that don't even make sense. There's no logic to them. And when he just shifted into, okay, this is who I need to be. These are my gifts. His gift is guiding others and, and teaching and, and mentoring them. When he shifted into being that, automatically it was an alignment. People recognized it. They're, they're like, this is your, ex your excellence. Yes, I'm going to pay you for that. And I'm going to do this and da 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 Okay? There's certain things that I do that people are like, how are you doing that? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And I'm, it's because I'm jumping to the front of the line where I belong. It's my excellence. It's where it is what I came to this planet for. But the way that you get there is you have to stop judging yourself. You have to stop with this, I have to have this plan and I have to go step by step and, and you know, someday I'll be happy and oh, it has to be perfect and oh, it has to all make sense. No, you have to first be it now. Be that version of yourself now. Stop trying to make it look good. Stop trying to, you know, fit your parents' expectations or your significant other's expectations or your kids' expectations. That's what's blocking you. When people come to me all the time and they're like, you know, I think I want to I want to become this or I want to do that. Yada yada. I don't know how it's going to happen. You don't have to worry about any of that because what happens is you're going to align yourself with because it's it's in alignment with who you are. People are going to automatically recognize that excellence. Yes, most people are not going to recognize it because they're not your people. They're stuck in their own their own <laughs> drama and, and whatever. But the people that are there, the people that are here to align, that need your excellence, that need what you are enthusiastic about, that need what you master because it's who you are. Like somebody um, yesterday asked me about what made me an authority on spirituality. 
and, uh, and, and, and teaching. And I commented back and then I was like looking at what I commented and I'm like, yeah, but that's not why I was, I commented, like I've spent a lifetime, uh, researching and, and learning about all these different systems. I've completed eight initiations and yada, yada, yada. The truth is, is that none of those things made me a master teacher. It's that those things were a natural expression of me being a master teacher. Someone who is a master spiritual teacher, I be I get obsessed. Like if you ask my husband, it's pro it's annoying to him sometimes because I will literally tune everything out and I will absorb a year's worth in like two weeks worth of knowledge because I'm bending time. It's who I am. And you are that too. You, there is something that you are here for and you don't have to fight hard for it. What is for you? You don't have to fight hard for. It's not hard. It's easy, but you have to be the one to let go of the overthinking. You're the one that has to get out of and people, people probably think that I'm lazy as hell or whatever, but the way that you start to get in touch with that is you stop doing all of the shit that is not in alignment with you. All of the things that you're not enthusiastic about, like constantly cleaning, like always cooking, like doing the laundry. Yes, there are certain things that we have to do just to like exist, but you want to minimize those as much as possible. Get really creative, get, get really um, collaborative if you need to. Like bless someone else in their genius. There are people who are freaking amazing at cleaning. Every time I clean, I'm like, this is stupid. It's taking me four hours to do what would take somebody else 30 minutes because it's her genius zone and I can honor her and love her and respect her for her genius. People that can clean are freaking amazing. I can clean. It's just that I don't, I don't like to. This is how you have to get out of, get out of the not feeling passion, not feeling enthusiastic. So here's where you begin with that. Cause I want all of you all to dedicate yourself right now to find your, listen, lots of cuss words are trying to come out right now because that's how passionate I am about this. And I'm so passionate. I even came on here with my eyebrows, not done, <laughs> my hair, not done yet. Like you all have to get this when you under, stop worrying about, about how you're going to get there and just get in tune with what the next step is with like I, I told a, a client of mine, I'm like, if you don't know what lights you up, then you have got to just sit for a minute until you get in touch with some aspect of yourself that's like, oh, I want to do that. Stop worrying about what's going to make you the most money because your excellence is what's going to make you money. Even if it's something simple, something freaking simple, like, uh, I don't know if you're really, if you have a green thumb, oh my gosh, not everybody has a freaking green thumb, but if you have a green thumb and then you are excellent in it, people are going to recognize that and be like, holy crap, I wish I could do that. Either can you teach me and I'll pay you or can you take care of my plants for me? <laughs> right? You have got to follow the enthusiasm. Stop trying to copy someone else's dance. The number one source of your suffering. Your suffering is not coming from the life that you're living. It's coming from the wish that you had the life that somebody else is living. That's where the problem is, but it's not for you to live. In fact, what you, when this is how you know that you're doing it. When you keep thinking tomorrow, I'll be happy. When I get that degree, I'll be happy. When I finish this course, I'll be happy. When I get that client, I'll be happy. When I get that car, when I get that house. No, you're meant to be happy now. You're meant to be lit up now. So the way that you start to find that, what you have to start doing is number one, start to get aware to the things that you're doing that are killing your passion. And I don't care what that is. Like, let go of judgment. Laziness doesn't exist. Laziness is a sign that you're out of alignment. Okay? 
There is no laziness. Even if you're just sitting, you're doing stuff. Because guess what? <laughs> Being a human requires doing stuff. Like your body is creating you constantly. <laughs> And listen, okay, so like Colleen's saying, the money will come once you figure out and start doing what you're naturally good at. Yes and no. So here's the thing. When we get so focused on trying to make money from our passion, it kills the passion. Okay? It can kill the passion, especially if you're an artist, if you're a creative. What happens is you start then molding your, your passion into what others want. Okay? So for some of you all, that may mean that you have a job, a job where at least it allows you to express yourself, to, to be this expression of yourself to as much, you know, to the, to the fullest would be the best. Um, or maybe it's a business that allows you to do that because business or, or serving others, it requires you to serve others and to give them what they need and to give them what they want. If you can find an alignment, that's amazing. But sometimes going into business in that way or, or having a job in this way, it can possibly kill your passion. So you have to start looking at like, what is killing my passion? There's certain things that you can do that maybe are not like the most, in, the, the thing that you're most enthusiastic about. Like I can cook um, and I, I make some really amazing food. I'm not, in, I'm not lit up about cooking. I find things to enjoy, like to get creative with it, but I'm not lit up by it. However, it's not killing my, my passion for life. Every time I cook, I'm not like, oh gosh, I can't go on making it take forever. So you have to start by looking at what's killing my passion. What is it? What are these things that I'm forcing myself to do because I'm judging myself or I'm worried about what people are going to think about me or I don't want to be lazy or, or whatever. And what are those things that I'm doing and how can I not do so much of them? And then start to play around. Like, like kids are the best freaking example of this. Kids are not worried about, I have to graduate from high school so that one day I can be happy. They don't do that until we start to do that to them, okay? We start to do that to them. But kids just are. They, they, it's all in the moment. They exist, they exist in the moment. They're like, hmm, what does my body need right now? Hmm, a snack. <laughs> what do I wanna do right now? Hmm, play. Okay, what do I wanna play? All right, let's play. Like, like that. And so it's, a, it's gonna be a process. You're gonna have to decondition. You're gonna have to let go of all of those things that you think that you have to be and all of those things that other people think that you have to be. Oh, you know, you look this way, then it must mean this about you. You're beautiful, so you can't be smart. And, and then you operate your life that way. You have to start shifting your identity and letting go of these versions of yourself that are not you. And the truth is, is that at first, let me tell you, most of you all probably not going to watch this video and then just go and manifest all of the abundance in the world right away. This is why I usually work with people over longer periods of time, because what happens is, is we go step by step, pulling off these layers. And eventually what happens is you shift in such a good alignment that boom, everything, everything just, just bursts right through. But it requires you letting go of the overthinking, letting go of this idea that you have to work hard, letting go of pushing, letting go of hustling, letting go of judging yourself because, oh, I should be doing more. Oh, I'm, I'm not good enough. Or whatever those things are that, that keep you from being yourself. You're, it's who you're being in the moment. I hope that I'm really driving this home, that all of the abundance that is your birthright, that was meant for you to have, and this does not mean like, oh, 
everybody's going to have a billion dollars. It's not everybody's abundance to have a billion dollars. Maybe your abundance is your connections and your network. Maybe it's a farm on the edge of the hill or something. I don't know, but it is what is going to fulfill you and what's going to make you happy. All of that is on the other side of you letting go of what you think things have to be, of your perfectionism, of your overthinking, of your pushing, and allowing yourself to be now. Be now. I feel so much better. See, that could not have been a post. <laughs> this is something that you all are gonna wanna rewatch because I'm literally, I just told you all how to bend reality, how to quantum leap, how to shift the timeline into your favor jump to the front of the line where you belong in your excellence. But the more that you fight your excellence and the more that you put a damper on it, the less that you will be recognized for your excellence and the harder it's going to be to be abundant in your life. So stop trying to be perfect. Stop trying to plan everything out to a T and look at who do I need to be now? What is this, just take the next step. The ne literally the next step. <laughs> I got one more little story. So my friend called me on Tuesday. She's not watching this, but maybe she'll watch it. Um, and she hasn't like announced anything or anything, so I can't say too much. But she called me because she's been trying to launch her business for like a year. And it's just been like really slow going. And that's because there was this resistance to her feeling like it was going to require more work, that it was going to take all of this time and, and that, it, you know, she would have to, she was telling me, oh, you know, I'm going to keep my job and I'm going to just take one client at a time and build up slowly. And then maybe in four or five years, I'll be able to leave my job. And I was like, you don't know that. You don't know that that's how it's going to happen. If you are so focused on how it's going to happen, you prevent all other possibilities from happening. You're literally making that the only way. You won't see any opportunities. So when we shift it out of that really, really quick, like it didn't take her long. She literally only took the next step. And then within, I think it was five days of that conversation, she had a conversation with someone else and was talking about da 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 And this person was like, you're amazing in this. You're an amazing person. People, like we want to work with that. And I know all these other people that want to work with that. So all you've got to do is tell me when you're ready. I'm going to hire you. I'm going to pay you all this money. And it was a lot of money. I'm going to pay you all this money. <laughs> and then not only that, I'm going to give you a, a, a testimonial and a case study. And I'm going to tell, I'm going to put you on with all these other people because that's what we want. We want this excellence that you have. So now instead of this like five year plan that she had this overthinking and oh, it has to be perfect and yada, 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 I have to build up to it. No, that was, that's her excellence. So now she's skipping to the front of the freaking line. <laughs>